So I am crazy enough and lucky enough to own this um, Music Man Stingray um, Special H model bass. And it it is insane that I own this bass because my playing ability just does not justify it. Um, this is the sort of thing, you know, this is like going out and it's like having your learner's permit and running out and buying a Ferrari. I mean, it's just, you know, there's just absolutely no reason I should own this bass other than want, right? Other than me splurging and spoiling myself. Um, I learned to play on the officially licensed knockoff of this bass, the Sterling by Music Man sub bass. And it, for its money, it is just incredibly nice bass. Um, in my opinion, the best beginner bass you can get that I found, in my personal opinion, was nicer um, than the Fender Player Series, which costs twice as much, if not more. So this thing had been a, sort of, you know, a dream of mine. Ever since I first sort of discovered them, I always wanted one. You know, from the minute I first picked one up and touched one in the store and got just complete sticker shock, um, I liked it. And I didn't know why I liked it, right? It wasn't just name, you know, it's not just that it says Music Man on it. Everything about it just felt right, and I didn't know why. As somebody now who knows how to play a little bit, now I understand why I was so enamored and in love with them. And as somebody who owns one, I definitely understand why I was so enamored with them. So let's talk about the differences. Um, without putting down the Sterling by Music Man brand, because everything I'm about to say that's awesome on this it has, it just doesn't have as much, right? It's not, it's nice on the, the inexpensive copy, but you can totally see how much nicer it is and so much more, you know, why it costs so much more when you hold the real deal. Um, fit and finish is just through the roof. Every single little aspect from the fretwork to the, the neck to, you know, the finish, um, you know, the weight of the wood, the wood choices that they use, um, the hardware, you know, most definitely, definitely the electronics, the, the, the tones, tonal range that you get and the, and the different sounds that this thing is capable of making is just so much wider and so more varied than anything I've ever seen. And, and I also own some very expensive fenders. Um, and this thing is just the, when it comes to the sounds that it's capable of making, blows everything else I've seen completely out of the water. So much so that I worry about getting lost in the changes, right? You know, when I find a tone I like, I'm afraid to change it. I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to get back to it, right? Um, the Music Man's known for a very snarling, growling um, sound in their pickups when you want it, right? But you can dial that back and turn it off and make it completely, almost completely go away. Um, and so, you know, you can get the right tone that you need for specific songs and turn that off, or you can just be obnoxious as hell and turn it up and just, you know, revel in its growling. Um, and, and it, you know, it's not appropriate for every song, obviously, um, but just for the pure joy of it, you can sit there and just turn that up and just enjoy the living hell out of it. And I do, I just giggle and laugh when I get it by accident, right? Because I... I haven't turned it and dialed it down for a song and it's just totally not appropriate for the song. I just start giggling, right? I can't help myself. It is just something about it just fills joy in my heart and, and makes me laugh. Um, I just, I just really, really enjoy it. It's kind of like, um, you know, on a sports car, um, when you accidentally, um, step on the gas a little too hard and your rear tires, you know, peel out. Um, and you're not meaning to, right? You're not meaning to burn rubber, but you just do so. And you sort of giggle and it's like, oops, sorry. Um, that kind of feeling with the snarl. Um, it's just got so much, it's just, it's just awesome. Um, I think we talked about the low action. Um, if we didn't, I'll talk about it again. Um, this thing's capable of getting an amazingly low action. And action is the height of the strings above the deck and neck before it starts to get fret buzz. Um, the better the bass is made, the lower um, when a professional can set, a professional luthier can set it up and, and lower those strings without you getting any fret buzz. And why that's important, why that's good for you beginners, um, it's just less effort pressing down on the strings. Like the strings aren't in your way when you're maneuvering around and 
Um, there's less distance between them and the fret, so it takes less, less effort to press them down. The less effort you're spending down to that, the, you know, you're not, one, you're not wearing out your hands as quickly. Two, you can play a lot faster because you just, you know, tap it, hit your string, you know, pluck your string and then move on to the next note um, quicker, faster. Um, it just absolutely feels and sounds beautiful. It comes with strap locks, not that that's the biggest deal in the world, but it, these all come um, straight from the factory with their Ernie Ball um, super locks. They're, they're incredible. The hardware is nicer. Um, came with uh, Ernie Ball super slinkies. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but mine did. Um, I don't know if the previous owner had replaced them or not. The pickguard that you see on mine did not come with it. It came with a cream pickguard that was pretty dirty and pretty scratched up. Um, everything else about the bass was in excellent condition. The only way you could really tell it had been played is that the pickguard was all scratched up. And the one that I have on there is no longer on there. That one's signed by Chubby Chicker. Um, I initially, you know, I was so excited to get it. I put it on the bass and then I quickly realized I was smudging it when I was playing. So I took it off and replaced it with a black one that looks very, very sexy. And of course I put an Ernie Boss sling on there. So um, price, I paid around $1,300 or $1,400, I think by the time I got it taxed and shipped here made in 2016. Let's look at the new ones. Um, you can pay quite a bit of money for these. Um, if you're new to playing the bass, um, a four string bass is going to be better for you than a five string. Once you've hit the level where you can, where you're playing, buying one of these because you need it, not because you want it, the additional string probably isn't going to be much of a problem for you. You can adjust to it. Some people will want it because of the style of music they play justifies it. You can get these with one or two humbucking pickups. Prices may increase once you add that additional pickup. I only needed the one um, to get the sound range that I want. This is the most equivalent model to mine, so we'll go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, the Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray Special H, right? So same model, um, just an upgraded version of it. Wide variety of colors no longer comes in the mint green um, that I own. You know, I guess that was a fad for you know my day. Let's go ahead and click on the white one just so we can see a little more um, the back of it a little easier. Um, I apologize, pictures are taking so long to load. Um, there, I believe there's been some upgrades and improvements in electronics and stuff like that. Um, not that it needed it. It uses two batteries now, so there's two slots for batteries, not just one. They changed the um, neck plate and the pattern of the screws to increase rigidity and strength. They now have this sort of burnt maple. Um, so we'll go over here and look at it a little better, zoom out. They basically take a flame to these things and get um, this darker pattern. Um, purely a looks thing, right? You know, they're, they're looking for something to differenti differentiate at a glance. Um, from other companies' bases. And I think now that they um, have that Sterling by Music Man making several variations of the, you know, they look exactly like them. They don't play exactly like them. Um, so they wanted something that visually you look at it and you see, oh yeah, that's a real one, um, other than the logo. Um, I would assume, right? I mean, this is purely cosmetic. It's not functionality. Um, the finish on these is nice. Um, they always have been on, you know, on mine and these. Um, you can slide your thumb up and down that neck without needing to sand it to get it as smooth as you need it to be. It comes super, super smooth, super, you know, easy to play. Um, obviously, batteries means um, active electronics, um, you know, active preamp. Um, battery dies, you're not getting any sound out of there. However, um, I have run the batteries very, very low and was still getting sound out of them. Uh, I've changed them, but you should probably change them once a year, uh, you know, and if you're playing gigging constantly, you might need to change them more than that. I have not changed them once a year, um, you know, I've changed them once when I first bought it, haven't changed them since, pick it up, play it, still sounds great. Um, when I talk about how I played the batteries, you know, basically forever, um, and they still were getting sound. That was I was thinking of my Sterling by Music Man, not not this one. So I couldn't tell you how long they last, but I can tell you, I bought it about two years ago, and they're still lasting for me. 
um, if you leave your cord inside a base that has you know that runs on a battery that has active pickups or a preamp you will drain the battery a lot quicker so remember to remove the cord don't just leave it sitting in it in the base um, my one gripe I said I would talk about my one gripe I don't believe I have yet um, that would be the width of the neck both both across here and depth and I talk about this in every base review that I am a huge huge fan of a thinner neck um, the Sterling by Music Man sub that I had came with a jazz width neck so I learned on a very thin neck and found that to be when comparing it to other bases I tried to learn much much easier to play someone who is a you know a huge a fan of the fender precision bases will tell you well that's because you're using improper technique the thicker neck forces you to use proper technique well you know okay i still like a thinner neck you know that's a personal preference that's a preference that many many people share um other than that absolutely everything from the tuners to the way they work to you know every little tiny detail on this base I absolutely love. Um, so that is my take as someone who owns one of these and owns, you know, several other really, really nice bases that, you know, that somebody who doesn't gig professionally should not own. Um, kind of like a car collector. Um, I collect bases and um, this one is by far in a way the nicest one I own. So, you know, do I recommend going and getting a used one? Sure, definitely. If this, if you can't afford this, and even if the prices of a used one is a stretch for you, like it was for me, my experience buying a used one, and I did get it from Guitar Center, who I am not affiliated with in any way, shape, or form. Um, I bought my bass from them used, and it, you know, when they said it was in excellent condition, it was, in fact, in excellent condition. Um, absolutely love it. Play it all the time. Um, great great bass it is not the bass that i pick up and play most often though it's not my go-to bass one because i'm kind of babying it two um because of the thicker neck um it is just faster and easier for me to play with you know my much less expensive but still very high end um road worn fender jazz bass 60s jazz bass um it's a little faster and easier for me to play just because of that minor difference. Um, can you, and did I adapt to that neck? Yes. You know, I had this for about a year before I bought that road worn and it, this was all I played for about a year and I was definitely fast and quick on the neck. Um, but I always just sort of, you know, wished it was thinner. And so that's my one gripe. Everything else just totally floored by it. Just in awe of what it can do. Um, so that is my take on it. Please like, share, subscribe. Um, I hope that helped you. Um, if you're on the fence about whether or not you should buy one, whether it's really worth the money, yes, it is. Um, there are plenty of videos out there where you can go watch someone who is much more talented than I am, um, show you all the various sounds and play them. Just bear in mind, um, it's going to sound much, much, much better in person than you watching it through um, the internet on it. You know, what it, when you upload your videos to, to YouTube, the sound and the video quality both take a major hit. They get sort of processed down. Um, so there's absolutely no way you can tell just how beautiful and wonderful sounding and looking these things are until you have one in person and you're playing it at home. Okay, thank you very much. Please like, share, subscribe. All three help us considerably. considerably. Uh, I appreciate your time.